I think I think it'll go live automatically. <laughs> That's on me. That's awesome. Oh, okay. No, we're live now. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Surprise. Uh, I guess it was a uh, a death bounce um, right there. So, uh, hi everyone. I uh, welcome to um, Grammary, the third one. Welcome to Possessed Pinions. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the anatomy lessons that we've had so far. Uh, today because I certainly have and uh, there have been a lot of talk about wings and phalanges and stuff and we're going to make a pair somewhat similar of our own so um yeah if you just want to add an extra piece of flair to your chords this is a fun way to do it um let me show you Ooh, that's heavy basically what will be coming out take bets on how many times I have to uh, wrangle my hair during this panel. Whoever gets the correct number uh, gets a point. Okay, so this is just a good example of just a simple pair of lightweight wings that you can throw on yourself. Um, you don't have to wear them on your back. Uh, you might see something in a little bit that um, they're so light that you can pretty much put them anywhere. I mean, that is a pretty bad demonstration, but yeah, here you go. They're they're pretty light. Uh, this is the the uh, upside version, and then this is the downways pointing version. If, here's the bat wing. Um, it's just a simple little two piece, and then there's a back plate, which is the third piece, and that's to help weight it and stabilize it. Um, but this is all foam. It's craft foam, just like if you saw the armor panel. This is the same more or less method, but we're going a little bit more in depth to um, doing the heat forming. As you can see, a lot of these shapes on the wings here are um, pretty much exclusively formed with the heat. Um, and a lot of the texture is done with the heat as well. And um, the wings, these ones are very simple, but you can go a lot more extreme with how much you want to heat shape um, each little bit. And if we have time, I'll, I'll show you that part too. Um, but yeah, here's that. Uh, these are not painted. These are not sealed, technically. Um, the heat does seal them. If you can see how that's shining, that's ready for paint right there. It'll not absorb it. Um, I mean, it'll absorb it a little, a little tiny bit, but it'll just stay on there pretty well. Um, and yeah, there's a wire for holding the structure that allows it to be, um, you know, shaped however you want it to be. And, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. I try to fold it like, you know, with anatomy, but um, I mean, you can break it, you know, break anatomy if you want to, but here's just like, you know, the nice part is being able to get what you want out of it. And so there we go. Um, there is a pattern available on the website if there's any um, problems uh, seeing those, let me know. Um, if I, I, I've sized them so that you should be able to cut them, like print them out on one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper without having to resize anything. And at that size, you should be able to get all pieces out of one large, um, what is it, 12 by 18 piece of foam. So you can do this with one piece of foam. If you want multiple colors, uh, like this, obviously there's two pieces of foam. You can, you know, keep going um, that way, like just do whatever you want to. Uh, but uh, if you're just trying this out and you don't want to buy a lot of stuff, you can do it with one piece of foam. If you want to size them up, um, you can always just take them into a video editing or uh, graphics editing program and like stretch or pull them or whatever. You will need to do more than one piece of foam at that point. So if, as long as your largest or smallest, largest dimension, is uh, not past the 12 inch, you should be fine with the foams that you can find at most box stores. Um, but uh, if you go bigger than that, you're gonna have to look for like a roll of foam. And if you go bigger than that, you're gonna need a lot more wire um, for the bones. And you'll probably have to go for a higher gauge wire. Um, here we're using, uh, what was this again, 22 gauge. This is just floral wire. It's pretty cheap from um, the floral section of the craft store. Uh, there's thicker wires. It's hard to find something larger than 18 gauge in uh, like longer than about that big. Uh, what is that? Like 
20 inches. So um, heads up even, only is now 1156. Oh, thank you. Keep an eye out for that. Um, so you might have to go to like a hardware store and get get more intense wire if you're going to do really, really big wings. Um, but yeah, this is the basics. As long as it has the wire and um, the like make the wire for the support and the heat shape, the shape from the heat. And uh, once you're you're there with those two things, um, you'll be fine. Uh, so, OK, um, any questions on anything before we get into this? We're good. OK, so um, the first thing is once you have your pieces cut out, I've actually pre shaped my wire. Um, so like I've done the links here, I should have written the links for um, what you need for each side for this size wing um on each one but i you know you basically pull out a, a piece Bonnie i wants to know if she can fly with these uh, well i mean you can try <laughs> in your I imagination <laughs> I don't, uh please don't hold me responsible for any any uh <laughs> uh potential uh uh anything related to i don't know maybe any damages i'll fly <laughs> flying yeah <laughs> damages i i this, this is at your own risk um, but I'm not going to be the one to say, you know, don't follow your dreams. So, you know, maybe, maybe you can figure it out. <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't recommend flying with these. Uh, they're light enough, though, that you could probably throw them and it will paper your plane for a while. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, so with the wire, um, if you can see there, the, the important thing to do is to curl the tip. And that's to make sure that one the glue has a place to like anchor it into there and um also to make sure that the tip of the wire doesn't poke through the foam when you're moving it around it needs like like a plate to be stable on um at the end because if you're moving around you know there's like a it's like the end of a needle basically and eventually uh, it might not even take that long it will poke through um but that'll keep it stable if you do that okay so i'm going to start with start with the angel side picking at random. All right. And so when I like to do these, um, as you can see, I've like just sort of made these three. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. I fit them in like this. So on the angel wings, this middle one may not be necessary, um, but I like to do it just for like extra, extra maneuverability. Um, but these ones are you know, so flimsy and the birds, their feathers are taking over for structure instead of an actual bone. Um, there's not really much skin going on here. It's just all a bunch of feathers. Uh, and their feathers are like intense. Like if they break a feather when they're growing it in, they could actually bleed to death. So um, like these are probably some of their most intense feathers across their entire body, um, like in that section. So I, you know, like I do the wire to like sort of make up for, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I. But uh, he has he has showed me very in depth detailed. Um, he eats his feathers. It's really strange. He'll land. He'll grab one. It's already loose, but he'll grab them and he'll just huck it. And I, I need to get that on video at some point because is he crazy. mad at the feathers? He is. He like <laughs> he, it's like he's, he makes this noise just like e, and you're like okay. <laughs> Hopefully he'll make an appearance this panel so we can all say hi. Yes. If you want to listen to him, you can listen to last year's panel and he just sung his way through it. Um, unfortunately, the iron probably has Teflon in it and the, the glue gun almost certainly does. So he is going to be upstairs in the room where it's safe for him to breathe. Um, because, uh, yeah, if you have pet birds, watch out for Teflon. You don't want Teflon fumes uh, getting around your bird. It's it's very, very bad. M says that her dove does that too. So maybe it's just a thing. Oh God, <laughs> it is. Like, like I, I always wonder if it itches them. So like by the time it comes out, they're just done. They're just like nuts to you, you know, get out of here. <laughs> That's actually pretty awesome. I want to see, I want to see a dove eat a feather. Like that, that feels like an extra level of like, what's the word? Kind of like a, like if you ever watch pigeons preen, they're very twitchy about it. And Banner's also very twitchy about when he preens. Um, and so I... Uh, it's literally just angry birds, but in like real life. Yeah, it kind of is. It kind of is. Okay, so gluing down the wire. Um, I usually start with just like a big dollop at the tip um, and then get that into place. And I have nails, so I can I can just push on the wet glue 
um, without really feeling anything. If you don't have nails, um, you might want to use like the tip of a pencil or something um, to push that down with, but that, you know, helps like secure it if you like get it into the foam because the heat from the glue will stick the foam really nicely. Um, and then once I have that in place, I do like a quick check of like the length and the shaping and that looks pretty good. So I can continue. Um, and then my little trick for doing this is I bend the wing back. Uh, and then you don't need to glue the entire length of the wire. You just need a, a couple dots here and there. So like, I just go a few because this will be cooling down. Um, and as soon as like I start to meet resistance on my glue gun, that's when I stop. Um, Moss Badger is saying they make creepy looking silicone dealios that you can put on your fingertip. Oh, nice. The, the oh, I've, finger I've condoms. seen something like that. And I never, <laughs> like, I think I've seen a postal worker using one. Um, or maybe they gave me like a thimble. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But that's kind of awesome, actually. Uh, I, I might look into those if they fit my crazy fingers. Uh, but yeah, I just do a couple dots of glue at a time, just like that. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, do I need that zoomed in at all? Are you guys okay seeing that? And then you just hold it for a little while while it glues. And you don't want to pull this back so far that you pop the glue off the wire because the glue will have trouble sticking to the wire more than the, uh, the foam. But uh, I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. So you just like keep going, let it cool. This is probably the most time consuming part of all of this. Let me know if I accidentally block the camera too might not see it. A couple more. It's okay if you get glue where it shouldn't be. Like you'll fix that again too later. Is it time consuming just because you can't, you don't want to like get glue kind of like all over? Yeah. I One thing I really hate are those like webs that come off of hot glue. Oh yeah. And they just get everywhere. Um, don't do your hot gluing. Oops, my bad. Don't do your hot gluing on your ironing board. <laughs> a bad idea <laughs> just just don't do it trust me because <laughs> then when you iron you're very unhappy <laughs> mm. <laughs> is that from personal experience yeah what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> i don't know at all what you're talking about uh yeah no i um i had an all-nighter one time for a project uh, in college and i just wasn't thinking I had been up way too many like hours and I was just rushing to get stuff done. And uh, yeah, I ended up with a whole bunch of like weird webbing texture on the back of velvet <gasps> um, <laughs> that I then had to like explain away the next day. Which, which again, for context, you went to costuming college, right? Yeah. Yeah. I went to, well, I went to UC Davis, um, but they have, a, or a, I don't know if they still do. I hope they do. Um, but they had a really good uh, textiles and costume design. I believe so. I have heard that about Davis. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think I was like looking into it for like grad school. Then I didn't want to do it because oh, yeah. I don't um, want to go to school anymore. I, I know. Like, <laughs> there's so much I would love to go back to school to do. But I mean, one, I can't really afford it anymore. And two, it's just like, oh, do I want to do that again? Like, again, <laughs> again. I've already done it like twice. Shout out for the people in chat who went to Davis. Yeah. <laughs> There's me and saying go Aggies. <laughs> yeah, go, go. So go Ags. <laughs> Sounds like something else entirely when you're on the other side of the stadium hearing people chant it. What does it sound like? Another part of the body. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of anatomy. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was always made fun of. It was like, why are people yelling gonads? <laughs> Wait, know. no, hold, do you know about RISD? Wait, what? Do you know about RISD? Oh, RISD. Their, their, their mascot is the Nads. Oh, no. That's yeah, like amazing. the basketball team. So they have like a mascot that's like just a, a, a so that they actually yell gonads. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, that like makes me so happy <laughs> when i was like doing on a research about art schools um that that was one that came up i never knew this this is amazing okay yeah that... it's a sports team wow yeah it's it's really weird how like like i don't know if they had like a lot of art schools just have sports teams now like the academy apparently like or the academy of art in san francisco mm -hmm. apparently as i was leaving they were really getting into sports 
um it feels not it was, natural <laughs> yeah it was such an like foreign idea like my art school have- had um i went to cca and their mascots the chimeras and they had a um, sports team i don't think it was very good oh wow yeah <laughs> our team was good or not i i know my brother like played baseball my, my brother played baseball like played baseball and he was talking about sometimes how he would like run into the academy of art people and he was like they're pretty good and i'm like oh i guess that means something but i didn't know if that meant like as an out of tournament like situation because he wasn't playing them in tournaments he had like long since graduated so i don't know if he meant like 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 casually or what was going on <laughs> I just can't imagine having time for like hobbies in school. I mean, you don't have time to sleep or eat. How do you you have time to like go to the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, sometimes you don't. It's not fun. It's really not fun. (laughs) Um, Okay. So really quick to catch up. I'll explain what I just did there um, in a second. But um, when you're putting on the second wire, uh, I'm going to be aiming for that second, like I'll call it a digit right now, even though it's a feather, um, second digit. But the, um, and this one will skip a digit and go to the third one. But uh, here, the junction is what's important up at the top. Um, I pretty much, I'll, I'll yeah. I, so this junction is what's important up here. So this part you kind of want to be like a bit of a solid mass of glue. Um, so that's where I'm going to start the gluing on this edge. Um, the rest of it can be kind of free and it doesn't matter. But there's like a good dollop of glue. Um, aim and then get that down. Um, so Melissa is saying, so you do the dots of glue to put it down and then reinforce along the edge point to do glue. Yeah, so I'm not using a lot of glue when I do the reinforcement. Um, I'll show you right here. I did that big dollop and as it's drying, you can kind of see maybe, okay, you can kind of see how it's bubbling up a little bit there. Hopefully the light is, it's raining right now, so the light's not the best. Um, but what I do then is I don't add additional glue, but I just use the heat from the tip to fold over the glue that's there. Wait. And there's also Hopefully. a question that is, are you using high temperature or low temperature glue? Ah, I'm using high temperature. Um, I personally just like how high temperature is more robust. Um, the higher heat will hold to the, the foam better, um, but I the melting temperature of the foam is pretty low, so you're probably fine with low temp. Um, but I I do just prefer high temp, um, which also, when you're going back to melt the glue with the tip of the glue gun, it makes it a little easier. Um, and then here's a little, this part's a little fragile. I hope you can see this. I'm just bending back a little bit to get that first dot in there. And then a couple more just to use up what's already, what's already on the thing. Um, and I guess you don't have to do this. I just have a tendency to like drop it when I'm, <laughs> when I'm placing it down just cause a flat surface, uh, it tends to, tends to help. Um, Moss Badger's asking if you've tried the hot glue that's meant for fabric. Oh, you know what? Um, I haven't needed to with foam. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, just foam is so like susceptible with heat, but the regular stuff has been fine. Um, I should try that, but, uh, I have a very, very large quantity of this glue and I've been swearing that I won't buy anything until I get rid of this. What's the difference between the fabric one and the other stuff? I think it's more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's less, wait, viscosity is resistance to movement, right? Or is that the opposite? It's like, I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. Resistance because if something's more viscose, it's like gloopier, right? I think so. Yeah. So, um, unless I've got it totally backwards, I, yeah, I think, I think the fabric glue is more or less viscous. So it's more liquidy. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's a chemical composition makeup difference. I I haven't looked. Um, I also don't know if the temperature is totally different. I, I don't think I've had to like if you need a special glue gun or something, I haven't looked that up. We have a confirmation from our bone expert that more viscosity means more gloopy. Ah, very good. Okay, he said gloopy. Oh, we have we have a um we have yes. a science teacher. Thank viscosity you. is resistance so to we forming. Right. <laughs> All these years. Uh, thank uh, you for thank you for being an educator. I know, right? For for real, like and confirming our 
like very, I mean, in my case, very long since uh, science education. Oh, and Moss Badger is saying it's also washable. Oh, okay. That's pretty sweet. I mean, I don't think you're going to be washing these foam wings, uh, but maybe you can. I certainly haven't tried it. That doesn't mean it can't happen. <laughs> Although I think the the wire, this being like steel floor wire, would rust up pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so that would be the, maybe if you got like um, that, uh, there's wire that's coated in, you know, like plastic and stuff, maybe you'd be fine there. Oh, if you and wash away. Um, uh, Repto Jane, the teacher, says that she wore Lolita at school for two weeks straight recently. Wow. What was that like? I, I first of all, I guess you said you were a high school teacher, I think. Uh, uh, yes, it says high school. Yeah, yeah. Was that, was that able to be done because of the Halloween season? Or, like, are you at a school that's more free about... I had to wear uniforms, and we had a very strict stress code, so it's kind of nice seeing somebody be able to, to wear something fancy. Only the problem was petticoats and labs. <laughs> yeah, literally knocked something down right before this panel, so I... And I'm not even wearing a petticoat. Because <laughs> we're sitting. But yeah, I can imagine that that'd be awful. I, um... I worked in uh, as a medical assistant for a number of years and even just like having something swinging off my hip was like too dangerous. So I had to like watch out for the keys um, that I had on my hip. Uh, so I can't even imagine like a petticoat like going, that would just be, oh my gosh. Okay. I, uh, any questions on that middle bone? I think we're fine. Bone. Fine. There. She's a Catholic. Wow. Okay. That's impressive. I, uh, that's cool. I, I also went to a Catholic high school and like they were, they were not cool with us uh, bending fashion rules. So shouting to all the Lolitas really... who went to Catholic high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they all dress like nuns. I know. Right. Like, like literally you get the, um, uh, Oh God, what's that? Was it? Hold on. Was it Boz that did like this really intense Catholic nun OP? I mean, there's been a few. I know. I mean, I mean for the... Emma's like Nunder Dome, she collected all of oh, the um, yes, yes. Nun... Emma, the library. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. There's yeah. There's a bunch of us. Well, not us. I didn't go. I went to a public high school and have different kinds of trauma. Um, right. A bunch of y'all, <laughs> y'all, um, who have that. Catholic school trauma. Right? Like the uniforms. Right. So also, you know, shout out, shout out to Repto Jane for, you know, being a teacher who is legit. Yeah. Supportive yeah. Supportive and, you know, kind yeah. to the people who need it and who are going going to school and stuff like that. And yeah. feeling, you know, and I feel expressing like expressing creativity. Right. And, and I feel like, I, I, of course, I don't know this from any sort of experience, but um, I feel like high school might be a special level because you're right there where kids are, I mean, they're, they're just, that's where they're really learning to be adults and everything is confusing and depressing and, you know, <laughs> like talk about trauma. <laughs> For real. Yeah. <laughs> like you're in the process of them basically getting that worldly trauma. <laughs> you're like, oh gosh, I'm here. I'm the only one. I'm the one that's here. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, if you see that afterwards, I don't add more glue unless it like needs it. There was a blank spot, but um, I uh, glued my band aid. Um, yeah, I smooth it down. I also don't want any big bumps of glue. If you can see, that's pretty thin. Um, so like when you have the other layer on top of it, any big bumps of glue will will stand out. Um, so like you could just even if there's like not on a wire, if you're just like off to the side um just use the tip of the glue gun to smooth it down and it'll look a lot better in the long run okay. i think the biggest struggle with this is trying to get the wire down before the glue hardens um so like don't fight it if your glue gun stops up and uh you're having trouble squeezing out the next bit or like you need to change sticks or anything just you know go with what you already have on the wire and put it down <laughs> and it'll just be a lot more uh friendly that way Okay. 
Okay. And then I go not quite all the way to the edge, um, but like like about there-ish, if you can see that. We're almost done with this, this one wing here. Um, I apologize for my band-aids, guys. Um, and this will be because uh, you're going to bend these. Well, I guess I can do that right now and show you. Um, you're going to bend the extra wire on the end here inward to help stabilize the up and down um, of that, this area. So like, you know, you, you never quite know how much extra you're going to be. I'm probably going to clip it off right about there and the same thing on the other side and then fold it in at like almost a 90 degree angle to that. Um, did you say that you were using 20 gauge wire for this? Uh, let's see. This is, let me double check. I think it is 22, 22 gauge. Um, you can do 20 gauge. It'll be a little stiffer uh, and stronger. If you're going for a bigger, bigger wire or a bigger set of wings, 20 gauge will be better. Um, but this is 18 and I think it was like $4 for the whole roll at my local Michael's since all the other craft stores have gone. Um, Okay, so when, when doing that, I just hold my space with one side and then I just bend it in with my hand on the other side. And yeah, it dented the foam. It doesn't matter, you're on the inside. And it doesn't have to be precise. It's just, just getting that out of the way. Okay. All right, so yeah, there's like a ton of glue that's like up and everything that can go away. And sometimes you'll end up with like extra glue on your gun. Um, you could just like use that like up at the next spot. Also, it's just started raining here. So if you hear a bunch of weird noises over the microphone, that's because I'm under a, like almost directly under a roof. Uh, so let me know and I can try to like fix something if it starts getting it loud. Just be like ambiance. <laughs> I mean, it would be <laughs> like the the sound that we haven't heard in so very long. Like, what, it's, what been, it's, it's been kind of I don't know. I mean, you live further north than me, but it's, it's been raining. Like, yeah, like, really. I, it's funny. Um, I I actually live one freeway exit from somebody else in the com, and like, um it will be raining at their place and like not at all at mine. And it's really weird. And there's the only difference is like a hill, like a hill that we can see over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a comment that says, is this piece going to be on the inside? Sorry, I joined midway. Yeah, the, um, okay, so I'll show you, right? Okay, I'm gonna glue these really quick and I'll show you. Um, so just gluing these down for stability. I'll just do this quickly. There's one side. Okay, so close to burning myself. Okay, so if you see right now, these are mirrors of each other. Glitter. Um, this will be on the inside of this, like that. And so the wire will be hidden. It'll be sandwiched between the two layers of foam. And uh, the end result will be, let's see, that will be like that, this side of the wing. If that can, can, I hope you can see the, the inside there. So, okay. I hope that answers the question. Um, so I think that's what you meant by inside. Um, unless you meant the, this part here, this is like the base where it's going to be on the center plate, which is that round thing that's over here. Um, and that's just to give it like, like a center one I had to like divide the pattern um, so that it fit on printable pieces of paper and foam um, and then to like having a separate piece for the base does help give it like a little bit of a weight um, for it to to stand on when it's on your back okay Let's move down and you don't need to be perfect with the uh, 
the placements of the wire. Okay, I just hold on to those while they while they calm down. Slide my hand out here. Okay, so I'm gonna finish the one wing to make sure we can get through one at least, and then if we have time, we'll go back to the other. Okay. I'm gonna make some noise. My ironing board is slightly out of reach, so hold on one second, you guys. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the um, the wire part done, cooling down, don't worry if like the middle of your thing is like doing that kind of bubbly stuff, that'll all work out later. Um, so that doesn't matter at all. Uh, and then you have the top part. This is gonna go like this. So before I glue them together, and this matters much more with the bat wing, than it does with the, the bird wing. Um, but I want to do a little bit of heat shaping uh, to the, the foam before. Uh, I forgot the cloth I used to uh, iron on top of. Let me see if I have anything else. Hmm. We have a comment that says, so you could do fun color combinations with this pattern. Yeah, you totally can. Um, in fact, I didn't have any foam like this, but uh, you know, you can do like, like pastel purple and neon green or something. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever, like, like, and I mean, you can paint these afterwards too. So, um, okay, I'm going to try using a paper towel and see if that does the trick. Um, you can, uh, you know, you can, there's my iron. Um, you can, uh, you know, slightly alter the color that you're doing it on top of. You don't want to go too far from the color that you have on your base because then you're just fighting what's going on. Like if you have bright yellow and you want to get it to be green, you're going to, it's going to be a little bit tricky, like a dark green. It's doable, but there will be yellow showing through at like, like points. Um, so you want to go with something close. So like, say if you want like bright gold wing, like metallic gold wings and you want to paint over it with metallic gold, I would start with like, there's, there's two colors of brown that I've seen in stores. Like you could go with the, the light tan or the dark brown, either one of those would work fine. Um, but you don't want to go, if you go with black, you can totally do black and it would look really cool, but there will be a darkness to the gold that will show through. Um, so like keep that in mind when you're trying to get the color uh that you're doing okay so little iron is back um and uh Ooh, when you're so small it's so i i needed something that fit in the space i love him it, so it's... much <laughs> like look at this thing uh it does take a little while to heat up though so hopefully this works um so i just start heating up the areas that are gonna be like I'm pre-folding it basically so that when I glue it, um, it already has like a muscle memory kind of thing going on um, so that it kind of knows what it wants to do already. Uh, and I'm using this because if you touch the surface of your iron to ooh, the foam, um, okay, now I just sort of like curl it and hold it while it cools down. Um, but if you touch the surface of your iron to the foam, it'll do, uh, let me, it'll melt the surface of the foam, which is actually what's going on here, but this is a very like slight version of it. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any points where I actually did it a lot. Oh, heat right here. Okay. Here's where I accidentally just like slapped the iron on the foam, if you see this bit right here, um, if you can see how shiny and how it's kind of melted. Is like there a, a danger there? of also like getting it onto the iron and having it stick if you are accidentally melting 
the way yeah possible. there probably is i've never actually done it but i've heard from people that um that you can end up with like foam on your your iron which if you have an iron that's like dedicated to doing foam i guess that doesn't matter too much but i want to use my iron on fabric uh, you know and clothes uh beyond that so it's probably bad uh to do that so yeah as you see if you it, like really just takes the shape really quickly um and i'm gonna do the opposite with this side wait did that take oh cool okay i thought maybe the pattern of the the, the paper would end up in there but it looks like we're lucky and it didn't okay so you just heat it up you do not need the tiny iron you can use a regular full-size <laughs> iron and you don't need it at the highest heat setting um this one just has on and off so I have no idea what heat it actually is um but when I'm doing it with a regular iron I have it like probably straight like straight in the middle um it's definitely not as high as like a cotton and it's I think it's like just past polyester um speaking of patterning like having a pattern on the um wings is it possible to like do that intentionally yeah it definitely is. Um, and in fact, I'm seeing, I don't know if you can see this, there actually is a little bit, um, I must have pressed harder on this one side. I don't know if that's coming through. I don't there, think it's visible in the video, but yeah. Um, I imagine my, the texture would be kind of cool in real life. Yeah, like um, I, I wonder if there's anything I could try that with over here. Uh, okay, once I finish this, I'll look to see if there's anything that we can impress on the phone but yeah you you definitely can like like press something in um the only thing that i found that doesn't really work is if you use like metal stamps for leather working and you heat up like the stamp and the foam and then try to press it in the foam is too spongy to make a clear impression you do see it a little bit but it's like it's like marshmallowy um but it does take so that's kind of neat okay get this out of the way again um and yeah, I still I still meant to try it, and I kind of forgot. Um, in the last panel, I was saying, if you uh, if you like, maybe try to iron a corduroy or something on top of the foam. I'm pretty sure the lines will take, um, as long as it's like a, a heavier corduroy and not like a really like light one. Um, but yeah, it would be really cool to like make make impressions that way. Okay, so now you have this piece has already been pre-folded, so it kind of like has a you know like a preference in like how it wants to move so that'll just help it move more naturally um and then this is like the structure so that goes on top of it um so i like to line it up first just to make sure that i haven't done anything like that needs attention get the other way and um that looks pretty good so this is the part where i'm going to start because this is like you don't want this to get too off and this is adjustable more or less once you like it'll look off because of how the wing is folded so you don't need to worry too much about this this is the one we're getting them even um is gonna like matter the most so knocking stuff down okay, okay. hair um and so you've done already done all of this glue here um you don't want to undo the glue when you're heating it so you want to be a little bit careful about how you put it on and the reason why the wire doesn't go all the way up to the edge is because the new glue is going like there so i'm going to start here just a little bit on top of that to get it started and then quickly line that up and get that down sorry oh my gosh okay can you see that okay I didn't watch me block the camera so you can't see anything. <laughs> okay. So those are lined up. Um, can't see any black on that side. You don't see much white on that side. So that's, that's about where you want them. Uh, and once you let that cool, then you can sort of like use that as a measuring point to keep going. Um, so again, I try to do the top and the bottom as I'm going because bending it back this way is a lot easier than bending up. Uh, you can bend up the individual feathers and that's that's easy but any of the wired parts and again you don't need like the whole the whole thing and then just carefully line them up and roll them in 
as you're going. So when I'm gluing, and I did it there, so you'll see what happens. Um, I try to press from the outside edge towards the center so that any excess glue ends up squeezing out into the thing instead of out of it. Uh, now I did squeeze glue out of it right here, if you can see that. Um, hopefully you can see that. So uh, if you're really quick, and if you have nails like I do, um, you can pull that off right before it solidifies and you can get it out of the way. Um, if it's already dried and everything, uh, you can like use a pair of like, if you have um, some really good precision scissors, uh, those will do it. I've used nail clippers before to really good success. Uh, so I, I do recommend those, but you just want something that'll get right up to that edge and, and snip it off um, so that you don't have the like the glue coming through. Um, just as a heads up, we are now at 12.30, which I believe is our halfway yeah. point. Good. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay. Noted. All right. I'll get this on. And then squeeze it. Okay, I think I'll, I'll have enough time to do the bat ones, but I might just go very quickly. So again, everyone stop me if there's a, a question. Since I've gone through everything, it should be a lot quicker. But yeah, stop me if there's any, any questions at all. I, this part's pretty straightforward. You're just matching things up. Sorry about my bandaged thumb. Uh, and you see, I am keeping the glue at the bones. Um, it's just, that's not for any particular reason. It's just that I don't need it elsewhere. So there's no sense in like wasting it. I guess wasting it, you know. Extra work. No one needs that. Okay. And again, at the top, you want, that's where you want, like, it to be a big, solid kind of, like, you don't want it to be too raised, but you want it all to be glued. And I did a little bit too much at the edge, so hopefully we're fine. Coax that in there. Yeah, if you think of it, like, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but you don't want the peanut butter jelly to come out of it, then that's kind of how you squeeze it. Like, it's kind of weird that that actually has like importance in like gluing something together, but it works. Well, you know, I think that's like the kind of thing where it's like you, if you do it for a while that you, you just naturally want to just make things easier for yourself. And Probably true, yeah. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> Essential like like moment in doing anything when you're just sort of like sitting there questioning everything you've chosen. <laughs> you're like, what's going on? And then you're like, oh no, wait, I'm fine. Okay. Sorry, not to block the camera. And that was my bad. I accidentally hit the glue gun right here. Ooh, okay. That's not coming off. I'll have to like cut that later. All right. And then the very last thing is the tips. So right here, just like a couple dots and get that edge back. I don't even know if there's a glue that like doesn't web as much. This is just like what I got from my local, um, my local uh, craft like reuse place, um, which is where I do a lot of my shopping. But uh, if there's a glue that doesn't web up as much, that would be kind of awesome. Yeah, like as far as I know, if it, 
it, it would be really fun to maybe like experiment like oh buy a bunch of different glue brands and see if they right. don't web up but like, also i feel like they haven't had a need to do that because they're like well it's it's hot glue yeah <laughs> like Facts. people will buy it <laughs> yeah okay and i haven't needed to like you don't have to glue every feather down it's fine if they're if they're open sometimes it's kind of fun um, you're really just encapsulating the, uh, the wire. That's the most important thing. Oops, come on. There it goes. And then when it comes to the back plate, it's totally fine if they don't line up exactly. Like the way you cut will always differ a little. Um, so don't worry too much. You can always trim whichever one is hanging over drastically down afterwards. Um, so don't like, you know, don't worry when you're you're making it. It's better to be kind of loose and free than it is to like be too exacting. I have learned over the years. Um, there's a comment that says maybe oh. with a Yoohoo glue u h u blue huh like is that is brand it, is it a do they make a hot glue brand i i remember they have like a a liquidy glue whatever you call oh, it if it's brand. liquidy maybe then it wouldn't do the thingy as much yeah a lot of like um there are some regular liquid glues that, that work with foam but a lot of them don't hold as well um so i mean obviously like rubber not rubber cement um contacts cement works great that stuff just that holds um but i haven't found anything that's quite so good uh, i see like tutorials and stuff online and they're using something that almost looks like super glue but i've never had a super glue actually work out when it comes to foam um i just did something wrong don't close up the entire bottom of the back yet my apologies the straps go right here when you put them on your body. I sandwich them between this part and this part, and then it goes on the back plate. So my bad, uh, if anybody got that far, um, as you see, I just peeled it back. Like, that's not the best thing to do, but it's not the worst thing to do. So you'll be fine. I apologize for getting this that tracked. Uh, but there, there's one wing that's basically finished. Um, and you can see you can bend it already, uh, let it do all kinds of things um you can get a pretty because you have two wires you have a good st stable like um you know bend going on um and it gets compound curves pretty well uh if you need to do anything really extreme um there is a way to do a hinge uh, and i do those using straws but i don't have a good example the way this pattern worked out it would have been really small but like if you can see here this is just a quick example of like like it's kind of deconstructed so you can see what's going on there's a straw in here and uh maybe we can get it out one of these others that can work as a good base for making a hinge um so you basically just have flaps and you bend them over the straw and you glue them down on the side um and that's a good way to get like a nice mechanical type of joint um you can see that going uh, so fun. yeah so like if you need to do anything extreme um you know that that's a good idea to play around with um as you can see it's not that pretty looking so like you know if you're gonna do the wing with that like work it into a more um like mechanical cord i don't know maybe something steampunky would work uh but yeah like uh yeah that just is a quick way to get like a really extreme like super bendable no wires um like that and you know you use up some trash which is always great <laughs> um did you use hot glue to attach the anchors of foam around the straws oh um yes so let's see here so you don't want to get the hot glue on the straw but um basically i glued the flap and then i glued the edge of the flap down um to the other half of the foam so let me see here maybe you can see it at this top one you see how it's just folded over 
um, and then glued along the edge here. And I was it's doing it clearly a hinge. It was messy. What was that? It's like literally a hinge. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> like like, and this is a really big hinge, just so that like the concept is visible. You can go really small with these, um, but I was just testing, so I was like, okay, big. Um, but yeah, like it doesn't have to be wings. Like you could have like you know anything hinged, anything that you want hinged, you can hinge it that way, and it's, it's really unhinged. Big... Yeah, unhinged. <laughs> I mean, that's afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We are at twelve forty-one. I can I have a little over half an hour. I can do this. There's also another this. question about the hinge guys. Seeing, I, oh, yeah. it looks like you alternated flaps from either side of the wing piece. Okay, I think I know what you're saying. Um, okay, yes. So, yeah, this is this hinge comes from this piece. This hinge comes from, this hinge comes from this piece. This is here. This one's that way. Um, so yeah, that's like, as you can see at the top, uh, you know, like the piece that it's not connected to is going to be loose. Um, these are all the same direction. So you can see it repeated. Um, and then here, the same thing. There. Uh, but yeah, so you want to, you do want to alternate. Um, you probably would be fine ending up with an odd number instead of an even, um, you know, because that way you can like take into account where the hinge ends and like adjust for that um, and then have it. I mean, I guess you could work out the pattern whichever way you wanted to, but uh, yeah, you do want to alternate. You don't want, well, if you're trying to cover the wire like this, you can alternate. I actually don't think there's any reason why you have to alternate or not have to alternate. I guess it just depends on your design. Um, but yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. I uh, I was stumped one time and I was drinking a boba and I had a giant boba. <laughs> it was like, hmm. <laughs> let's see here. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I also am often crushed for money. So I'm like, okay, like, what's the cheapest? <laughs> All right. So let's see, half an hour. I will do this quickly. That's the stop. Okay. And just make sure I have the right side. So this one goes this way. I put the wire onto this side and it will face the other direction when we're done. And again, stop me if I did anything confusing. should have gone a little bit more with that but that's okay we're fine And I am doing these a little bit more far apart. Um, it's probably going to be fine. I think when I was constructing them before, I was doing them closer together. But let's find out to see if this is fine. It probably is. Especially if I'm elongating the little dollops here. I love like the experimentation that comes with all of these. Like each time you do something new, it's like, yeah. okay, like I'll, I'll try something different. See yeah. It's it easier. Like, like I end up learning a lot by doing that, by making mistakes, you know, I'm like, will this be fine? Will this be okay? But like, like the first way I do something is usually never the way I end up like doing it habitually. <laughs> Okay, do to do, do. I rushed that one a little more as you could see when I was peeling back that first side, it was like coming off. Uh, 
Okay. And oh, these patterns are there ones that like you drafted yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. I um, so I started with the bat wing because that was the one that was gonna be harder to fit on a piece of paper. Um, and so I, uh, I actually, I guess I freehanded the first one, but um, I, you know, I kept adjusting the pattern, adjusting the pattern. Um, the way I do that is uh, you take your first drawing. And I just like hold it up to a window, like put it on the glass. And then I put another piece of paper on top of that. And then I just start tracing. Like, oh, yeah, like the natural light box. Yeah. So like you don't need a light table. You don't need anything like that. You don't need tracing paper. This was all just like junk mail that I used. <laughs> um, and then I just keep tracing that way. And I think we kind of put this disclaimer in any kind of like crafting um, panels that we do. But because the panelists you know, design these things themselves, please just don't sell them for your own profit. Feel oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, like make them for yourself. Absolutely. 100%. Like make as many as you want. Um, but yeah, it, it does take a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah, like not just me, but like all of us, it takes a lot of time. Um, that said, though, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> Oh, speaking of making as many as you want, could you do this with more sets of wings? Like, could you do a biblically accurate oh angel? God, please, <laughs> please, someone do that. Yes. yes you, <laughs> I, I don't see why you can't. Um, I mean, really, just like your own preference is the uh, the limiter of like, you know, you could probably stack another pair of wings in back of that one. Um, you know, just like keep going up. So you have like a cylinder of wings. Uh, or you can like just anchor these onto any other things. Actually, if you round out this base, there's no reason why you can't punch some holes through this and stick it onto like the shoulder armor from the Rose Foray panel. Mm. Uh, that would probably just fit on just fine. It might be a little wobbly. You might have to do something to stabilize it at the base, but it probably would be fine. Um, I should try that out, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. That sounds really fun. Yeah. We have a, another question here that will lead into um, some ad, more advertising. <laughs> do you have, um, do you sell things? Do you have a shop or an Etsy? Right. Well. <laughs> I, exactly. Um, so interesting. Um, I've had a shop, but uh, it wasn't online. Um, so I, for the longest time, I had like a tiny little shop in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that was great before the pandemic, but I I will be selling stuff um, in the future. I still prefer just selling in person. Um, I am not a fan of what Etsy has been doing. I, I will just say that. So I don't plan on selling on Etsy. Um, and I keep meaning to get an online shop going and I'm still figuring that out. I just, I haven't been happy with a lot of the, the online selling mediums that I've seen out there. So I'm still working my way through that, but I will be selling in person at the pop-up, um, the uh, at the Artist Alley Table pop-up coming this December. Third uh, is the date, I think. Fifth, fifth, fourth. fourth. Hold on, Saturday, <laughs> December third. You're right. Yeah, I don't right? know. Just see the numbers, and then <laughs> if you see any like right? typos and stuff in all of our schedules, it's me. Oh no, it's always me. <laughs> I know. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah. Like I keep looking, and I'm like. I don't remember what day this is. Uh, uh, yeah, it's happening in San Francisco um, for ILD weekend. Yes, that's right. Which I also keep forgetting the date of because it's like a weekend and I keep forgetting that it's an actual, it's like one day, but it's also a weekend. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you're in SF, I highly recommend going to the pop-up. If you're thinking of traveling to SF um, and you feel safe now with COVID, I recommend going to the pop-up. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, so come see me in person. I'm, I'm actually really excited. This is like, it almost seems surreal, you know, like the fact that the world is moving again. And this is like a major part, like the real big thing that's like, wow, the, the world is actually moving. I, I, some more promo for you is that besides doing selling, you're also be hosting one of the stations for the craft workshop yes yes we're also <laughs> I'm, I'm, there's gonna be a lot of like fun crafty stuff <laughs> at the pop-up um so yeah i'm also uh thanks for leading into that because i was like 
like um, crafts <laughs> yeah like all the crafts are happening at the pop-up so like like come it'll be dark december you'll be cold and you'll want to just like chill and do something fun <laughs> um and crafting will be totally doing that and it's not just me um there's uh, at least three other crafters that are also uh, yeah we're gonna have egl treats yes who are awesome and they're up next later today i think yeah our lovely uh, oriana and allegra um yeah. they will be doing some crafties um oh snail is here and says that she loves your hair <laughs> you, snail. thank you and it's going to hair. be um zoe from um sfcom as well as kelp awesome is gonna be coming up from um you know where she lives now in the la place. to yes uh, out, do things <laughs> the the far far away um yeah and i think i heard from kelp she's not doing a cross stitch she's doing she is not we i think tentatively i think we're gonna do holiday um uh cards postcards that is a great idea i love that i uh, like sitting and drawing and coloring is so chill like that I'm probably going to actually want to do after the yeah. afternoon. Because <laughs> like yeah, yeah. there's also like a um, like a box outside just in like the square, the plaza, I think. So if you wanted yes. to like send out any cards, you could just drop them off there. That's like the greatest idea. <laughs> like, and then you don't have to think about it afterwards. So you're like, my holiday stuff is done. That's the hardest part for me is like actually getting stuff Always. in the mail. Yeah. Like, because the, the holidays, there's just so much stuff going on. They go by really fast. And you're like, uh oh. I kind of wish that I could send out Halloween cards, like as holiday cards, and then just get it all done in like September. Oh my gosh, do uh, I? I think I've gotten like I know Emma sent me like Krampus cards, which kind of <gasps> it's, yeah, it's both. It's fine. Do the Krampus cards. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm so gonna do that. That's definitely gonna be happening from now on. Okay, so this is the the bat wing. If you can see this middle, ignore my middle finger. Uh, this. This little bone here is a little bit tougher than the bird wing. Um, so just do your best. Uh, you can see I've kind of folded it kind of funny. Um, that's the only part that's different from the burn wing. The rest of it is pretty much the same. Okay. Doing a bit of a rush job, but I think it's okay. Add some glue here and there. This one's a little high. Um, you can't quite see this because of my position, but um, sometimes, and if you have a high enough temperature glue gun, um, and you can't get to the glue that you need to kind of heat with the tip, uh, you can force it through the metal. <laughs> um, so you just like push down hard. Try not to touch the foam because you don't want to burn the foam. Um, but if you hold it on the metal long enough, you can get the metal to get hot and then it'll start burning or melting the glue underneath. Um, you just have to be really, really careful because you don't want to burn or melt a hole through the foam. If you wanted to go for like that distressed, like bat wing look though, could you intentionally put holes in there? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, just be careful because once foam starts to burn, it like burns. Um, but I like, no, you could totally do that. Um, I think if you get a heat gun on it and if you like heat gun a hole through it, You'll watch the edges like start to curl up. Um, not that unlike when you're burning polyester. Uh, and also do that outside. That's going to have the fumes are going to be not fun. Um, yeah, but like I imagine like the meltiness would kind of look yeah, really cool. You'll, and if you stretch it, you might get like I haven't tried this. So I I'm, this is all like theoretical, but you might get a nice like stringy look, which would be really cool. Like if you get that like the wispy stringy skinny things okay um that said i'm trying to think of like what <laughs> i guess if you really want that look and the foam isn't doing it for you you could try using the hot glue um like uh if you just sort of like let it drip i've i've seen things where if you let it drip in front of like a fan um and then have an object behind it like um like those little picture easels that they sell um, for like your phone or little pictures and stuff. Um, or just like a, I mean, actually, let's say a picture frame with like something across it, like a couple strands of wire or something would probably catch it. Um, and I, 
all of the 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 webbing from the hot glue is going to go right onto that that picture frame and i uh, like catch so you'll have all of this like messy webbing finally a use for a hot glue webbing <laughs> right like wait wait purpose um yeah like i uh, that could be really really cool um Okay, just so you get, so I'm, I'm rushing, so I'm just going to mark into the phone with my fingernail where I want that to go, uh, so I can get that on really fast. Uh, but yeah, like, you could probably do something really cool with that. Um, i trying to think what other stuff does that, like, webbiness. Um, maybe shrink, like, heat shrink filming, or mm -hmm. heat shrink film, uh, that stuff that you use to like heat shrink around um packages and stuff like if you do that and then burn it instead of like letting it shrink just like keep going and burn It'd it might be like a really cool texture yeah. yeah 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 i think that could do some really cool stuff um but yeah any of those definitely do that outside like wear a respirator if you have one um n95 mask at the very least i uh, and you know with a decent you know, not going to cause uh, sparks to cause a fire type wind, but um, like a, a good breeze going so that you have like some fresh air because you do not want to breathe any of that stuff. Um, especially since there's a bit of a variety between what kinds of plastics those are made out of. Uh, you can't really always be sure if you're getting something that's better than others in terms of breathing. Yeah, we love safety. Yeah, safety is very important. <laughs> Like, ah. yeah, safety allows you to keep making things. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think I've started wearing, uh, like, like I had them from work originally, but, um, you know, I had a pair of like protective, uh, glasses from, you know, when we would see patients and stuff. And then I was sewing and I accidentally hit a pin that I forgot that I left in the dress oh. and snapped. And the needle ended up right here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, I was able to get it out. It was fine. I'm fine. Oh my gosh. I always wear my safety goggles whenever I'm sewing now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like so paranoid. Um, but it, you know, it they were really nice pairs since they were for doing like, exams and, and surgery and stuff so it was like okay like like they're very clear but yeah ever since that happened i'm like nope glasses always <laughs> so safety is very important guys just be careful we are not yet at a time where we have additional bodies that we can use when we get one seriously like there's a variety of things that you get that can happen to you when you're like sewing and then <laughs> like it's one of those things you don't think about and then you do and you like freak out <laughs> and you're like ah and it's really weird to think about historically like what people went through sewing with like you know like machines a hundred years ago you know like the first sewing machines and how there was you know safety features was a laughable concept. <laughs> Especially um, when machines were so strong. Like, so strong. Repto Jane is saying that she has her safety goggles in prescription. Ooh. Nice. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm getting at the age where I'm wondering if I'm going to start needing read reading glasses. Oh, like, I, 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 I am already at the age. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I just have real shit eyes. <laughs> I mean I, I do too, so I feel you. <laughs> I uh, I'm pretty pretty blind. <laughs> but it's all it's all farsightedness, so I actually have like really good oh. up, But I have to take my contacts off. So like like I can do really good like I have to be like here, but I can see great close up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I am but I am legally blind. Same here. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Uh, yeah. I am. What's what's your prescription? 
Um, I am somewhere in the high 400s, I think, right now. Or negative high 400. I, I know the vision number itself is like uh, 2750, I think. So <laughs> I am um, at around negative 10 per eyeball. Ooh! That is worse than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's hard to find contacts at that point. I wear hard contacts. Oh, oh man. Okay. Because yeah. they're um because they help the the hard ones they helped with um like the kind of correcting like astigmatism or myopia. Yeah. Um yeah. so it contains the eyeball from like kind of growing too much. Oh, that's good. My vision is getting worse, so I don't know if I'm like like hopefully I'm not the one doing it. But uh yeah, like I I do worry that like my my bulb is continuing to squish. Just, yeah, just football shaped going <laughs> on and on. <laughs> Terrible. Okay, we're at one o'clock, so I'm gonna hurry. But um as you can see, that is this takes the most of the time getting the, the wire down because that's you know, you don't want it to It's down to, to the come. wire. It is down to the wire. <laughs> we are down to the wire. I guess we are, aren't we? Rocky okay. on the road is saying that the sewing machine hasn't actually changed that much from the original mechanism and designs, yeah. which I suppose, like, besides becoming automated, yeah. like, the actual way that it does the thing is pretty much the same, right? Right? Yeah. No, it is actually neat that they basically, like, figured out a design and it's like, hey, we're good. Um, I have to admit, I am not a fan of the newer machines and all their computerized, like, mm -hmm. features. I just... And they're I so really flimsy. They're so flimsy. Super plastic flimsy. Are not like, I think I'm done with plastic parts. <laughs> like, ugh. I having trouble though. Like, if anybody ever wants to get into like a really lucrative business, try to figure out how to repair like antique machines. Um, you will probably have unlimited business because <laughs> like nobody knows how to fix them. Um, and like you'd probably have to get. If anybody's ever done like antique car restoration, I imagine it would be very similar. Um, where you might have to start like like recasting parts off of old older parts with people that still have like functioning machines. It'd be like this this weird community. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody that owns this one type of machine, they all know each other. They all know who has like which parts. Okay. So that is Almost done for that. First Maiden saying it's a little bit better than antique cars because for bigger parts, singer parts are plentiful and companies oh. still makes make a lot of them. That's good. Nice. I have seen parts and stuff like on eBay and stuff that they don't seem yeah. like they're low or anything. It's just that they're very specific. Right. I have been having the hardest time finding Bernina parts. Um, I've been having the hardest time finding somebody to repair my my favorite bernina too like i i don't know what happened but um something snapped and i lost uh basically all the, the stitch stitches so like i can't go to zigzag um i can't adjust the width of it anymore um but this machine is so strong and bernina's are bernina's are like hefty they're seriously hefty. i mean this the the machine itself weighs like 30 pounds um like I can't lift it on my own. <laughs> um, but I uh, yeah, like oh god, it's so sturdy though. Like I've I have a photo of me sewing through one, two, three, five layers of marine vinyl. Oh my god. And it was like I could sew leather with it, um, and then go to doing like detail detail embroidery work and everything, like on the same piece. And just like uh and every stitch was precise and straight and and strong <laughs> i think i have a newer brother and i from newer i mean like at least 10 years old because yeah yeah it was new at the time at the before yeah. that we had an even older one that was like pretty like it was you know like not as plastic but the one i have now is like extremely like it's got the computer shit and it has the automatic needle oh, threader yes. and i do not like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hate it so I much I totally feel you. I, I, my college machine was, was this old nineties brother. Um, and it, it was just at when you were starting to use, like you have to, it's like a button to press to switch between stitches. I and stuff. hate those. Yeah. And I did have to get it, but, um, 
it's right at the line where like it's so flimsy compared to the Bernina. Um, and like, even in college, there were times that the Bernina was my mom's machine. I would drive down from Davis and use her machine <laughs> just because mine wasn't doing it. And it's just, you know, the stitchers are shaky. Like you don't, you don't want that. And so, yeah, I tried looking at some, some newer brothers because I was like, should I get this one repaired or should I, should I just buy a new one? And, ah, uh, I don't like them. <laughs> I don't, I do not. At some point, it, like I thought I was perhaps going to continue doing sewing. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just get like an industrial because I have all these juky parts already. But as it right. turns out, I'm horribly traumatized um, and do not ever want to sew again. So that never happened. <laughs> oh, no. Is there, is there a story or was it just school? Oh, just school. Normal school things. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Haley has a juky. So if I ever wanted to sew anything like really heavy duty, I could just go yeah. over to her place. Yeah, I keep I keep debating whether I want to like go get a juki or not. It's just you know price. Yeah, They're appropriately like, priced, but yeah, like, like it, when you when you start sewing with one, you kind of don't want to go back. Oh yeah, legit. Although I mean, I've used jukis too, and honestly, the Bernina was just about the same feeling, and so that's why I was like, oh my god, this Bernina. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I straight up folded those to get the the hard lines. Um, and then if you want to get these, the bubbly parts, like I have going on the other one, um, I'm just going to heat up like the interior of the webbing part. And uh, I'll just do one at a time so you can see, um, and I'm just going to fold it in the other direction. So like pinch it with your fingers like that. And then you'll have that going it's pretty fun how it just like does it okay we are okay i'm gonna move and yeah, we have a little bit over or oh, hold on we started <laughs> late <laughs> there, there's 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 some minutes we have some minutes okay there, there are <laughs> Or existing minutes yes we won't specify how many <laughs> want to think that way <laughs> But yes, <laughs> there exist minutes. Okay. Probably shouldn't have worn this bracelet. My hair is like, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so just folding and pinching. And yeah, like these these fun little little folds and stuff like that, you can totally utilize that. And like, you know, say you want to like do something with a crazy gather and stuff like that, like heat it up fold it um you can always just like punch a hole and uh use like a rivet or something to like you know keep it in so onto foam it'll hold um it's it's not super secure because you can rip at a certain point but yeah you can sew into foam um i've i think way way back when when i was trying to make like like and we're talking like 2005 um when i was trying to make like mini mini hats and stuff like that i just the easiest way to do it was to just sew fabric onto foam <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. We're good. Yeah, the bubbling kind of technique really adds a lot of like dimension and texture. Huh? Yeah, I yeah. Like so that. like have a, a marble or I mean, I've got like, I wasn't gonna use this, but this would work like the cap of a soda or something um, or drink. Uh, if you heat up each in individual spine and stretch it over, you can start getting like, like, you know, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Knuckles. I mean, heck, use your knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to get to the center, but yeah, like, like once it's still hot, you can get a little bit. This is cooling down, so it's not going to hold really well, but you can get a little bit of form in there. Um, and yeah, that adds it adds so much to it. Okay, just try to. Okay, we'll see what that does. All right, get this thing out of the way. Okay. And glue gun. And just like the other one, we're matching up here. I'm just gonna rush, so I'm just gonna try to like eyeball this. Sorry. 
sure that I did this right. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Don't know how well that took. Take care of the rest of this. I think in terms of like bat anatomy, the spines on the wings are actually just like big jazz hands, right? They're just like yeah, kind of figurey. Yeah. <laughs> They're like we. I mean, <laughs> thumb is like. I mean, yeah. There's like thumb, and then they they sacrifice the pinky in a way. I forget if it combines, but yeah, they're like we. <laughs> uh, birds are different. They're more like, oh god. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like the whole thing, the whole hand, like kind of goes like that. Um, it's kind of weird. It's like one big triangular like paddle bone. Um, it's interesting to see the difference, though. Like it's you know they're different they achieve the same end result um and what about mm -hmm. it from different directions and it's like it's interesting to see how um like convergent yeah i mean eventually we'll all be crabs though so yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's right. they have thumb for at the like for being able to hook on mm -hmm. the bats do i mean which i didn't put on here because i simplified a lot <laughs> but yeah you can always add that. Um, this is like a newer invention, um, but there's a type of like foam clay um, that you can find in like cosplay stuff. So they had it at Michael's for a while. My Michael's stopped carrying all that stuff because they're dumb. But I, I like angry letter. Um, but I, you can find like a foam based clay uh, that you can, if you want to make a little thumb, you can just like add it on there. Um, the, uh, what I used to use before that was model magic. Um, if you water it down, like, uh, if you've ever used one of those kneaded gum erasers from art class, you kind of like mess with it like that. Like just, you keep like kind of fluffing it out and it, it increases its like lightness. Um, and, uh, then it'll attach to the foam. You get the foam a little bit wet or you use a little bit of Elmer's glue uh, at the very beginning just to like help it adhere. Um, but you can you can put the model magic right onto the foam um, and they combine pretty well. So if you wanna do extra, extra things to it, add extra textures that you can't do with heat, like if you wanna sculpt into it, uh, you can do that. Okay. I just want to get to the back plate, so I'm going to finish this up. I'll just I might skip the inner bones for this one. And I'll just squeeze here. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'm just gonna go to the back plate. I can go back later and finish those those extra fingers, but this will function for now. So I need ha. Huh, here we go. Okay, so I'm just using ribbons to hold this on to um, a back. Uh, one thing that works really well, and I had, oh, here it is. Um, the cheap, uh, well, I, I guess cheap isn't quite the right word, but um, just like I was using hem tape because that's what they had. Um, and that's why I had like a bucket of. So I was just like, okay, I'll just use like hem lacing tape. Um, it works fine. <laughs> so if you want something that's not expensive, uh, you can go with this. Um, you know, ribbons are always great. I uh, I find that the length on everyone is going to be totally different. So like, um, like that's a yard on me. That is plenty for both sides. I mean, how big you want the tie to be will also depend on how long you want want these to be. Um, so if you want them to be extra long, do extra length. Um, just as as a heads up, we are at one fifteen. We are at one fifteen. You have okay. a you know, so you're fine. You have a bit of a grease period. <laughs> okay, grace. Uh, where did I put the, where did I put the other wing? Okay. Um, it flew away. Like for real, where did that go? <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> okay. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, it went wherever the top of my teapot went today. Yeah. Found. <laughs> Wait. 
went to where my bird sits. I don't remember doing that. Okay. <laughs> like, all right. So we're going to have, like, like. I can be your angle or your devil. You will be an angle or a devil. So um, I'm just going to use this because it's already here. I. Uh, the exact location where it'll sit will differ on you too, but I find um, the bottom is pretty consistently like right up against where that part kind of starts. So like that's where you'll start your width. If it's a really wide ribbon, you know, you can double it over and kind of crunch it up like that. Um, but I, uh, again, with the hot glue kind of being really good with foam, uh, you can get away with just like a quick, a good hot glue. Um, and this is the same for all four so if we only get time to do one that should at least be enough so did i block that with my head could you see that oh no i think it was okay okay and then um this one's lace so i'm just going to use the top of the hot glue gun to like push the glue that i did through to make sure it's nice and secure and then once that's in place um it's lace, so I don't need to go in from the underneath and add more glue on this side. Uh, you know, I will glue. Come on, come on, good. And if you like wanted to make the ribbons or laces kind of like more decorative and like big and bowy and stuff, that would be kind oh, of a cute thing too. Yeah, that would be awesome, especially if you have like like imagine like giant bows that are the yeah. tie. Like, like on each shoulder. Especially since it's like 4J fashion. Like yeah, it could be yeah. super cute. Yeah, this doesn't have to be utilitarian. I mean, you can use elastic if you just want something simple and quick. Um, but, you know, you don't have to. I, so I'm going to put the other side on. I'm just going to use the other side here. Um, now, I think, I think right about there will do it for me. This is because I've already measured it and I kind of know. Um, like, you can just sort of, like, tape it in place or just, like, hold that there with, like, a a binder clip or something and then try it on and just see if like you like that you might need to go like out to here you might need to come into the center just depending on like how your your bones work uh and then um i've tried this size on with a few people and it seems to be this has been okay but if you need wider um for the back plate uh there's a portion of the pattern this 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 center part here, you can just widen. So like this can be a, a bigger oval if you need a more, um, like a longer placement. If you want the wings to be out more too, like you can you can widen that back plate and just make it a bigger oval. Um, we have a comment that says you mentioned rivets earlier. Um, they imagine oh. that you could attach small charms to those. Yes. Uh, one thing I was going to do if I had time uh, was um, like take a small hole punch uh, through some of the the tips and like add um you know just like hang a bead or something like a little piece of crystal like yeah charm is Ooh, a great really cute like crystals yeah like uh, i have a little crystal that's like a star i was like i was gonna use that it's... okay so that is together and all these nail marks they'll go away <laughs> which is really forgiving, especially for me, since the nails are always there. Um, and when I'm doing the pattern, I just label left and right so I can do this faster, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just because I like to be able to line it up really quickly because we're using hot glue. Um, so I'll do the one side. Make sure you get that ribbon out of the way. I right, I just left this connected to save time, um, but you'd have two separate strips. Okay, so there's the center. Step down. Couple dots. Get that down. And you know, you just squeeze everything so it's nice and secure. And there's the other half. And if we end, need to end really quick. The other one just goes on the exact same way and the other uh, straps go on the exact same way. Um, so I could, we could end it here if you'd prefer. <laughs> I um, guess, what do you think? 
I could finish it really quick too. I mean, technically you have 10 minutes, I guess. We probably shouldn't run like right into it, but if you okay. want like an extra five. Okay, this um... I'll, just use, <laughs> I'll just use this ribbon right here. Um, and, I don't know. While we're at it, if anyone in the chat has any um, additional questions that yes. they want to slam in there. <laughs> Now's the time. Yep. Get them in. Oh, wait. Haha. -ha. I have a piece of the matching, matching lace. Otherwise, um, you can find Molly on Instagram. That is yep. her Instagram handle. Yes. Um, That's and... a good place to contact me. If you have questions, um, hit me up on Discord too, um, mm -hmm. or even like post in the craft chat for the for the event. That's fine. Um, if if you have questions, this yep. wouldn't be Molly is in the Barrier K Discord, so easily findable if you want yes. to ask her things. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do this one quickly. Melissa's um, saying, I'm trying to imagine how you would uh, use el elastic straps for this. Would you oh, still yeah. tie them at the shoulder? Um, just, like, loops? You can, or you, like, if you have, if they're stretchy enough, um, you can just, uh, you know, have them stretch over and get your arms in there. I don't like that. Um, personally, I, personally, I have a shoulder injury, so I can't pull straps on in that way. So that doesn't work for me. Um, but I... Uh, Like you could do, you know, if you're flexible enough, you could just slide elastic straps on the way you would kind of like a backpack. Um, yeah, maybe a method where like, instead of tying, you could, there could be like a, um, at the end of one strap, it could attach to the wing afterwards somehow. Oh like yeah. Yeah. Or like, um, yeah. So like maybe you loop it around and have like a button and another loop or something. I'm sorry, my mm -hmm. voice. Or like velcro or something velcro yeah there's good old velcro <laughs> um i always forget about velcro because it's like velcro and my hair are not friends oh yeah so I, i'm always like no velcro please uh but yeah like that's right velcro will totally work um heck i think i even have some like actual 90s clothing where they just used velcro as like their normal closure and it wasn't even there wasn't a second thought there was a dress i think emma bought recently where the sleeves instead of like having like the cuffs were velcro it really? was like oh, wow think, which brand was it was it like uh a beatage i think wow i know it was oh, weird God. that's amazing <laughs> okay so i'm just quickly wrong side uh, emma's here she's okay a beatage yes this, this is important information <laughs> definitely okay this is just a quick way to get kind of like the, the measurement so that's the same That's where I need to start the thing from. This might be twisted, but it's fine. Uh, I need it on this side so I can see. Okay, there's that. There's the hot glue. Yeah, Velcro, um, I'm trying to think of what else. I uh, Snaps, you could do snaps. Oh yeah, uh, snaps. Installing snaps can be a pain sometimes, so so don't worry. You don't have to do snaps. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, maybe if you're really creative, you can do um, like like a large kind of jewelry piece, um, mm. almost like a harness kind of thing, and then use those those jewelry closers to to close it. Maybe. Yeah, or even like something really simple. If you like put a slice or something in. The bottom of the wing and like loop the made like a knot at the end and just like uh, kind of yeah yeah slid it into like a kind of you know that that way i mean right. it might not it might not hold as well but potentially i think it could work yeah i think it could work um especially if i you know like like i mean they're they're definitely light enough that you can get them to to stay uh you don't need to do too much really it's wind resistance that starts to become the factor <laughs> um okay so that is down all right please let me know if i like went too far off camera too since i'm like not looking at the screen okay super fast we are about at 125 okay so we are almost done here <laughs> down And then I have it in my box of stuff. But I, then from that point, you have this seam right here in the center. And you can use that to your advantage if you want to be able to um, swing it. But I like it to be stable. So I just run a bead of glue 
right up the center and then press it together. Um, Today we've learned that everything is just sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, it is sandwiches. Actually, yeah, everything is sandwiches. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> um, and there, you can see it's it's, oh, yeah. it's holding. Um, I like to cover that scene with, uh, I'll just show you, uh, um, you know, just like a strip of like leftover trim from something. Uh, these are all just like leftover stuff. Um, you don't have to if you if you like the look of it keep with it um you know do anything you want to over there just like you know i could do like this strip of ribbon um if you have like a cool black and white actually i should look to see if i have a cool black and white um like something where it crosses the colors uh that would be neat um but yeah that's pretty much it you could put it on um i can't really get it over my back right now but like uh you'll still you know you don't have to have it i wonder you don't have to have it uh on your back it can go anywhere too uh you can have like a shoulder wing. I don't know. <laughs> oh, a corset lace up would be cool. Yeah. Ooh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Love actually, that. yeah. So once it's like this, if you have a strong enough hole punch, you can punch the holes all at once. It'll go through all three layers. Just don't hit that wire um, from before. Like maybe bend that back so it won't be in the way um, or cross it over. But yeah, you could do corset lacing if I interpreted that statement correctly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Any other questions since we are there? <laughs> we, we are at time. Yeah, we are at time. Anyone else? We're good. Oh my gosh. Okay, this has been a fun ride. Uh, sorry for starting late. Sorry for. Uh, that was on me though. A so, my hags in there. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys like this. I hope you guys enjoy this and have fun with it. Um, and yeah, I, what's up? Oh, the fashion walk is next. Fashion so, walk's next. Fashion walk is next. So definitely enjoy that. I'm probably just going to stay right here and watch it. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. And then, yeah, I guess hit me up with any other questions and, uh, I love you all guys. You're, you're great. <laughs> See you at the pop-up if you're coming. Come to the pop-up. Yay. All right. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs>